Welcome back to another video. My name is Coaster Daddy, and since we are coming up on the end of this decade in only a month, I wanted to take a look back at this decade in the roller coaster industry and discuss the many innovations that have taken shape in the last 10 years. Stay tuned, we have a lot of good stuff to cover here. Two thousand ten was a decent way to start off the decade, though there weren't a ton of major coaster additions coming in yet, as the country was still very much feeling the effects of the recession. The undoubted star of the show this year was the almighty Intimidator three hundred five at Kings Dominion in Doswell, Virginia. This is one of my top coasters personally, and the most intense coaster I have been on, no doubt, being a gray out machine unlike any other. To help kick off the two thousand tens, Carowinds also received a B and M Hyper Intimidator. Kennywood Skyrocket Premier Launch Coaster would open, and we can't forget to mention Formula Rosa, which still holds the world record for the fastest coaster, reaching a top speed of 149 miles per hour. The true innovation would really begin the next year, however. 2011 was a very historic and monumental year for one reason and one reason alone, RMC. Rocky Mountain Construction began its life in 2001 by constructing rides for other notable manufacturers, even building El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure. But 2011 saw the debut of New Texas Giant at Six Flags Over Texas, the Iron Horse conversion of the Texas Giant wooden roller coaster into a massive hybrid steel track coaster packed with the now signature airtime and bank turns we have come to love from RMC. This would change the game forever for all major coaster manufacturers in the coming years, as even manufacturers that were once supreme, like Intamin, would be forced to change up their way of thinking and how they marketed themselves in order to retain a stronghold in the market. RMC effectively would also kickstart the second coaster wars, as many manufacturers including Intamin, Vacoma, SNS, Premier, and even to a very small extent, B&M, would begin to incorporate very RMC-esque design elements into their coasters and experiment much more than they previously had. This has really been a win for us as coaster enthusiasts, as we have received such a vast array of new coasters in the last 10 years as different companies try to build the best rides and outdo each other. In 2012, the amusement industry really began to start picking back up after many years of little investment due to the bad economy. B&M would build their first ever giga coaster, Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland. Two great, renowned, though much different hyper coasters would open as well. These were Skyrush at Hershey Park and Shambhala at Port Aventura. Dinaconda, the last extreme fourth dimension coaster by SNS, would also open in 2012. Cedar Point would open Gatekeeper, at the time the world's tallest, fastest, and longest wing coaster, in 2013 as their first new coaster in six years and helped to begin a great decade for the park. We also saw two new RMCs, Iron Rattler and Outlaw Run, RMC's first wooden and ground up coaster. Over the next few years, many notable coasters would open. These include rides such as Banshee, Goliath at Six Flags Great America, Fury 325, Schwerdes Karanon, Coaster Through the Clouds, Flying Aces, Kilmarden's Wildfire, Mako, Lightning Rod, the first and only wooden launch coaster, as well as Mystic Timbers, DC Rivals Hyper Coaster, and Lek Coaster. These coasters, opened from 2014 through 2017, just barely scratched the surface for all of these years, but are just the most notable additions over the course of those four years. I do feel it is necessary to single out the year 2018 specifically because it was such a huge year for the industry. Many people proclaim this year the best in roller coaster history, or at least for the last 20 years or so. It is certainly up near the top in my opinion. Four Cedar Fair Parks got major coasters. These were Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point, Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion, and Railblazer at California's Great America, which were all RMCs, along with Hang Time at Knott's Berry Farm, a Gerslauer Infinity Coaster. This wasn't a bad year for Six Flags either, as they received a couple RMCs of their own. Twisted Cyclone at Six Flags Over Georgia, and Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster at Six Flags Fiesta Texas, in addition to Harley Quinn Crazy Coaster at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, and yet another 40 free spin with Wonder Woman Coaster at Six Flags Mexico. In addition to the coasters added by the two big chains, 2018 also introduced us to the massive Hyperion, a 262-foot-tall Intamin Hyper at Energylandia in Poland, Phoenix, the B&M Wing at Toverland, the B&M Dive Coaster Valkyria at Liseberg, the Mac Multi-Launch Icon at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, the massively successful Mac Spinning Multi-Launch Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City, and Steel Dolphin, and Intamin Blitz in Shanghai. 
All of these rides I just mentioned are really only scratching the surface of all of the new for 2018 coasters around the world, which I think really says something about the quality additions for that year. Wrapping up the decade and talking about this year, 2019, there have been some pretty good additions overall. RMC produced three great rides, even by their standards, with Untamed, Hakugai, and Zadra. SNDS had a great year too as they built the first air compressed launch coaster in the US for a very long time, Max Force at Six Flags Great America, as well as the massive hyper coaster at Kennywood, Steel Curtain, which also won Best New Ride of the Year from Amusement Today. Two great multi launch coasters would open with Copperhead Strike at Carowinds, designed by Mock Rides, and Taiga at Lin and Maki in Finland, the Intamin Blitz coaster. I got to experience Copperhead Strike this year, and it was a fantastic coaster and the perfect addition for Carowinds. In my opinion, better than Steel Curtain, actually. And I hope we see more great mocks coming to the States in the next few years. It has been great looking back on this decade in the roller coaster industry. I have not been part of the community for a majority of the decade, as I became an enthusiast in 2005 before losing interest around 2008. So I was pretty awestruck when I eventually did get back into the community through YouTube in late 2016 and early 2017 and began to learn about all of these crazy developments that had been made in the 9 years or so prior, specifically during the 2010s. Three more gigas were constructed. RMC had emerged, completely changing the landscape of the industry, and the world saw its very first and so far only launching wooden roller coaster, as well as many wooden coasters being opened which successfully pulled off many types of inversions. I could not believe what had been achieved by the many great coaster companies over the years, and I am happy that I got to experience some of these incredible rides over the past year for myself. It will be great to see what the 2020 decade brings us, as we already have so many great announcements for the 2020 season, which is shaping up to be great, and even know a bit about 2021 as well, which is looking to possibly be a very solid year. I hope all of you enjoyed my look at this decade and roller coasters. Of course this kind of thing only happens once every 10 years, so I just wanted to do a video highlighting some of the great achievements over the last 10 years. What are you guys looking most forward to going into the 2020s? What years do you think were the strongest and weakest years for the 2010s? What is your favorite coaster built during the 2010s that you personally had the chance to experience? Let me know all of that in the comments. As always, thank you all so much again for watching. Like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. And be sure to subscribe for roller coaster and amusement park videos uploaded on a regular basis. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.